Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. It is Thursday, the 11th day of August, 2022, Thursday of the 19th week in Ordinary Time, but more importantly, today it is the Feast of Holy Mother Claire, uh, not only the contemporary of St. Francis, uh, but also the source of wisdom for the Franciscan order, for the Franciscan movement. Uh, many times Claire consulted with, uh, no, many times Francis consulted with Claire um, as, as for her advice and for her wisdom on some of the directions and some of the decisions that had to be made as the Franciscan movement was growing. Uh, um, and as more and more people were being attracted to it. Um, Claire herself, um, again, survived Francis by many years, um, and she herself, again, uh, forms a woman's branch, or a woman's um, uh, in envisioning of the Franciscan movement. Um, her great claim to fame, however, is that uh, she had her own ideas, her own creativity, her own tenacity, her own ingenuity um, in what it was that she wanted this community uh, to live as um, in, in understanding the movement that Francis began. Um, and so she would not listen to any male authorities, uh, whether they be popes, bishops, or other potentates, um, as to how this should be done. She would not attract herself um, to any, or attach herself uh, to any rule that was in existence any way of life that was in existence for women. She wanted something that was completely different, uh, that was not necessarily novel, but was innovative, um, and in a way in which to express a connection to Christ in the gospel um, as a way to bring people to faith. Um, she eventually succeeds toward the end of her life uh, with uh, her ideas and her understandings of this way of life being approved uh, by the church structures and church authorities and things like that. Uh, but uh, she was a person whose inability to, to give up um, enabled her to bring something that was new and refreshing refreshing um, and wonderful and glorious uh, to the church um, in the continuation of this Franciscan movement. So we honor all poor Claire's today, all Franciscan women um, who tie themselves uh, to, as, as a source uh, to Holy Mother Claire. Um, she's a solemnity for the Claire's, a, a, a feast for everybody else, uh, but we rejoice um, in that continued wisdom that continues to shine uh, within the Franciscan movement um, and in all the places in which it is present and ministers in the world. Uh, there are special readings, oh actually, uh, there, there, we don't have a statue of Claire on the campus yet. We have lots of pictures. Uh, we don't have a statue of Claire. So for something completely different, um, this is Claire Hall. Um, as you can see past the handicap parking sign. Uh, this is Claire Hall, which um, is uh, the building that um, connects uh, itself through, through a breezeway uh, to the church. Um, and so it is fitting that these two major buildings in, in Claire Hall is uh, our major social hall, as well as some other church offices, uh, as well as our part of our preschool. Um, and. Um, uh, and so the fact that these two major buildings, you know, are connected to each other, sorry, there we go, uh, through the, you see through the crate mortals, uh, again, shows the connection between Francis and Claire, uh, that they are both together, uh, people who uh, helped this Franciscan movement, this idea that uh, God inspired in both of them uh, to continue to prosper um, and to bring more and more people um, into faith and understanding of God's love for them. Um, there are special uh, readings for Claire today, uh, but I don't have the Franciscan dictionary with me. So uh, the readings for today uh, that, that uh, most people may here, um, Ezekiel continues. Now Ezekiel goes back and forth because Ezekiel um, is written at a time in which there is a first um, conquering of Judah by Babylon, um, and and then there is the destruction of Jerusalem itself. So what has happened at the beginning of Ezekiel's prophecy is that uh, Judah, uh, the, the the nation that is left um, after the northern kingdom goes away to Assyria, um, is finally conquered by uh, the the Babylonian emperor Nebuchadnezzar, and uh, because of that, um, a kind of puppet government is set up, but it is not enough for. Um, Nebuchadnezzar to have Judah as sort of an independent state within the Babylonian orbit. He needs to conquer Judah, and he is going to do that by destroying Jerusalem, so the hearts of, of Judah, the heart of, of, of Israel. And, um, and to make sure, because the people are kind of satisfied with the fact of being a client state of Nebuchadnezzar, to kind of make... Uh, them aware of what's going to happen with the destruction of Jerusalem, um, God gives uh, Ezekiel an instruction to um, kind of go through a symbol, a symbolic exile by packing his bag, you know, and then and then showing how uh, the walls of Jerusalem are going to be breached and, and things like that. And that's kind of what Ezekiel does to to bring rebellious Israel back to understanding God. And perhaps if, if rebellious Israel had listened, God would have prevented um, this destruction. Um, but rebellious Israel does not listen and so Jerusalem is destroyed awfully and the temple is torn down um, and again most of uh, most of the inhabitants of Judah are taken into exile um, the king um, 
Jehoiakim, I think was his name. Uh, he is blinded and the royal family, you know, is, is either killed or sent into exile. It's again, the great tragedy that begins to unfold. Um, but again, uh, God trying to help um, through Ezekiel, Israel to understand what its future may be and Israel not listening and Israel not listening. That kind of understanding of you know, the, the importance of listening again is also in Matthew's gospel today where Peter asks Jesus, you know, how many times should one forgive? Um, and basically through the parable of the king who forgives the servant in debt, who the servant then himself does not forgive others who are in debt to him. Again, Jesus tries to show there's no end to forgiveness. There's no end to being able to show kindness and mercy to one another, of trying to understand each other, of trying to make sure that um, uh, that, that, that each other's lives are made better and made whole uh, by lifting up the burdens of faults and failings that we have committed you know, to ourselves or to each other, uh, to labor under uh, guilt, to labor under burdens of pain and, and the inability to forgive does not allow humanity to prosper and does not allow us to further um, ourselves in this world or to succeed in this world or to be witnesses of God's love in this world. Um, forgiveness was always, it's, a, it's a, one of the things that's at the heart and soul of the Franciscan movement. It is something that both Francis and Claire uh, try to instill in their followers and continue to do so today. Without forgiveness, we lose our humanity. Without forgiveness, we are incapable of, of, um, of, of reaching uh, the heights of what it means to be in relationship with each other. Uh, without forgiveness, it is impossible for us uh, to experience the wonder and love of God in our midst. And so the importance of being a people who demonstrate forgiveness in profound and wonderful ways uh, to show this world uh, what it can be, what it should be, what it must be in light of God's love. And may the Lord give you his peace.